Thank you. Well, I thought, you know, being digital marketing, might as well read off a digital phone. But uh, first, thank you for being here. Uh, it is my honor today to introduce Lance Compton. Mr. Compton is the president, CEO, founder, and driving force behind Red Clay Interactive. I won't spoil too much Mr. Compton's story in this introduction. I can tell you that he is an entrepreneur. Uh, he, along with Scott Atkinson and Greg Cruz, started accessnorthgeorgia.com, now known as accesswdun.com, and from that experience, started Red Clay Interactive. Mr. Compton has been named one of the 40 under 40 best and brightest by Georgia Trend Magazine, his alma mater, UGA, recognized him and Red Clay as one of the Bulldog 100, the fastest growing businesses of UGA alumni. None of the success has been done at the cost of doing things the right way, a belief Mr. Compton and all of Red Clay holds firmly. In fact, they were honored by the Better Business Bureau Torch Award for Marketplace Ethics. Mr. Compton lives in Flowery Branch with his wife, Stephanie, and his two children, Reagan and Griffin. He is a former student of Gainesville State College, although he graduated from UGA. And most importantly, he's not a fan of clowns. I don't think any of us are, so here you are. <laughs> Please help me welcome Lance Compton. Hello. I guess I got this thing on. Um, First and foremost, let me tell you, one thing about being an entrepreneur or doing anything in life um, is always about facing your fears. And I love writing speeches. I love writing marketing documents. I love everything else, but I hate giving them. So today, I'm a little out of my comfort zone, but um, I'm excited to be here to talk to you. Uh, when, when Nick called me and asked me um, to speak, he said that the college was focusing on um, entrepreneurialism and I considered really two, three ways of, of, of t writing my notes and deciding on what I was going to talk about. And I could give you the long, boring 16 year history of red clay and, you know, starting before 9 11 in a technology bubble just bursting, going through multiple recessions, um, uh, w what it's taken, you know, financially and from a business book standpoint. Uh, to build a company, but I thought with a focus being on entrepreneurs, it would be a little more interesting, you, you guys being students, to hear more about my story of how I became an entrepreneur and how that foundation that eventually led me to being an entrepreneur has driven our company for 16 plus years. It'll be 17, I guess, in October. But um, So I want to share a little bit about um, that, and then I can go into... Um, more about the company itself through an interview with, um, with Ruben and through questions and answers. And bear with me, I I'm, I'm, have horrible allergies, so the last few weeks have been about to kill me. So I've been asked several times, um, why did you become an entrepreneur? You know, what made you want to do it? Um, and I answer it in several ways. Uh, one way is 15 words or less, the other is the short answer. And then I have a long answer. And because I've got you for the next 40 minutes, 50 minutes, then I'll probably share all three. So the, in 15 words or less, God, Adolescent Dreams, Huey Pierce Long, Frank Compton, Washington, D.C., Al Gore, and Gordon Sawyer. And I'll elaborate on that. Uh, the short answer, it's pretty simple. God. Ultimately, this is what um, God had planned for my life, not me. I never had dreams of growing up, of, um, of starting or running, owning a business, um, especially not a marketing agency. My father had one, and I saw just the stress and toll and, and everything that he suffered through and, and the successes. I mean, it wasn't, obviously, it's, it's ups and downs. And so um, that definitely wasn't the, uh, <clears throat> the path I'd picked for myself. So, but in the end, this is kind of where the road has taken me, many times kicking and, and screaming as my wife and these two gentlemen over here can attest to um, as friends and co-workers, but, um, but I'm excited um, to be where I am today and have been a part of what we've done um, a as a company at Red Clay. So the story really starts about 30 years ago. She mentioned the 40 under 40 thing. That was a few years ago. So, um, <coughs> But <coughs> I'll start with... Um, with my story. So, adolescent dreams. Uh, some amazing teachers back in the 80s at Johnson High School, about a mile or two down the road, um, 
really stirred something within me as they taught me history, political science, uh, exploring literature, creative writing and things. And uh, the recurring theme that penetrated all those subjects was life was a lot more complicated and the world was a lot more screwed up than the amazing nuclear upbringing that my parents had provided for me. Um, you know, my dad, chairman of the deacons and, you know, perfect, like I said, nuclear home and you know, everything was always um, pretty plain around there. But, um, but like I said, the more, the more I read and the more I explored and the more I learned about the world, the more I realized it was a screwed up place. So as corny as it sounds, and it really is, but something inside me convinced me that it was up to me to change the world and make it a better place. I didn't know how I was going to do it. But I just knew within my being and within my heart um, in my late teens that, that that's what it, that was my calling. So um, Huey P. Long. And then through his classic novel, All the King's Men, uh, Robert Penn Warren introduced me to Huey Long. And if you haven't read the book, it's amazing. But, um, but I became mesmerized with how he used words, marketing, politics, and power to... Um, persuade the masses and impact thousands of lives for good and bad. I mean, he wasn't a great character in the end, but, his, but um, how he used politics to change Louisiana and, and really improve the lives of thousands there um, was, was extremely inspiring to me. Um, so I had my answer. I was going to be a, a lawyer and a politician and change the world. So the more I continued to learn, um, as I took sociology and psychology here at what used to be Gainesville College, um, I became more convinced that the world needed, needed me uh, to fix it. And at that period of my life, I can say that assessment was driven by a combination of well-intended compassion and a lot of youthful arrogance. Frank Compton. So, just when I had it all figured out and decided that I was going to major in what I considered the only paths to being um, a lawyer and a politician, which were political science or history, uh, my dad came along and said, what are you going to do with that degree if you don't get into law school? My first reaction, re remember the youthful arrogance thing, was what the hell are you talking about? I'm smart. I can do anything. Um, but in retrospect, I thought it through. And, and I really saw where he was coming from. So um, the best piece of advice he ever gave me that really has kept me on the career track that I've been on, uh, regardless of where I worked, whether it was in politics, in uh, public affairs, um, marketing, with Red Clay, anywhere else, was <coughs> he, um, he, he had me consider, um, he gave me advice today that then that still stays with me today and he said learn how to persuasively communicate specifically with written words and I would I would tell you all that too no matter what your path is going to be in life if you can learn to communicate learn to write um, there's really nothing you can't do and no matter what profession and, and you know the way he explained it you know you'll be a better lawyer if you continue that path um, but if you don't continue that path you'll have skills that can can take you anywhere And we see that in our business today, that those that, those that can write and communicate um, are the ones that really get, a, get ahead. And then he elaborated on that, and he said, always know that there are two sides to every story, um, two very complex sides. And <clears throat> he encouraged me to learn how to always research the facts, always build a compelling case for my side of the story, and then always try to express that in an open, honest way. And it's funny because my experience here uh, my favorite teacher, uh, keep, keep in mind my, my small town nuclear background, um, was um, a lady that was in charge of the department at the time, Dr. Amy Reeder, and she was very much further left, about as far left as I was far right at the time, but um, favorite class probably I ever took in college was, was having sociology with her. and. We would respectfully agree to disagree, but it opened my eyes that um, she really helped me broaden my worldview that everybody has a story and you always need to keep that in mind. Um, 
It doesn't mean you have to compromise what you believe. I mean, I named my daughter Reagan. I mean, so obviously um, I, st I stuck tr true to my, my uh, political views. But, um, but I did learn appreciation for always trying to empathize and understand what people are doing. And that has helped me tremendously um, in business um, because, I mean, essentially that's what we do for our clients today is we, we try to understand their clients and customers and help them build marketing programs um, around connecting with them and reaching, and reaching them. So, um, so that was great advice from my dad. Next um, in the story was Washington, D.C. Like I said, you know, uh, I graduated with U UGA with a degree in public relations. I moved to Washington working on Capitol Hill with the intention of fixing the world. But then um, after being there, probably two days, but um, little o over time as I was there, um, life taught me three, three things. One, our political and legal systems were so screwed up that I knew I could work a lifetime um, on the Hill or being a lawyer and probably not ever achieve my goal of changing the world. Um, that, that was my opinion, but you know, w once I got up there, it's kind of like the hot dog's good, but once you see how the hot dog's made, you don't ever eat the hot dog again. So you know, it was kind of a thing up there, be, being a young kid, you know, straight out of college, um, you know, advising, advising um, senators and congressmen on, you know, how to vote. And that was heavily influenced by what lobbyists, you know, I met with and friends. And it was just, anyway, it was just, it, 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 was, it was funny that I knew that wasn't going to be life for me. I also um, realized that as much as I enjoyed the benefits of living in the city, um, I was a country boy at heart. I grew up here in Hall County. And uh, so I knew that wasn't going to be life for me. And I learned that traffic sucks. So commuting was not going to be the life for me. And I can tell you, um, Atlanta traffic's bad, but D.C. traffic is a million times worse. I lived over in Alexandria across the river, and um, it was just an interesting thing. So, so at that point in my life, I knew that's not what I was going to do for the rest of my life, but I still had this calling to, to do something that was bigger than me. So I moved back home, um, enjoyed the proximity to Atlanta, but, but being back in Hall County, and I was still playing in um, politics. I was working for a trade association um, as their communications director, and, and we were, a, you know, we were a we were a lobbying organization as much as we were a, a, a membership organization, and and it was fun. And we, you know, we represented the whole state, and we're doing a, doing a lot of good things for the particular industry that I worked for, um, and um, you know, I was rel relatively happy with my job, but I still knew I wanted to do something more and um, what really changed um, at that point and you'll see this throughout this part of my life and um, what I've seen throughout the last 16 years at Red Clay um, to be an entrepreneur you got to be able to roll with the punches because life will deal you a different hand than um, what you think it's going to be many times and so um, Another tipping point in my life was when my boss moved, my boss came in and told me that the company was re relocating to Forsyth, Georgia, um, which is two exits north of Macon. So as someone who'd been in, enjoyed the, the seasons of Hall County and Northeast Georgia my entire life, at that point, um, I, I knew I didn't want to move, so my path took, again, took another turn to lead me towards, towards being an entrepreneur. So at that point, I had to make up, I had to make one of the biggest decisions of my life. Um, and uh, it was, do I move to middle Georgia away from my family and friends and still play in politics? Do I work in Atlanta, make a lot of money in public affairs, but go crazy uh, sitting in traffic? Or do I start completely over professionally at the age of 27? So in the end, I started over. So I say all that to say, you know, you're probably all different ages. Some of you, you know, may be non-traditional students. Some are traditional students. But um, it's never too late to, to make a change. It's never too late to um, um, 
start a business, become an entrepreneur, um, it's, uh, you just got to kind of roll with the punches. And, and I think that's one of the things that makes entrepreneurs uh, successful is they're, they're okay with change and they realize, you know, life's about change. And that's one of the things you really have to be okay with to, uh, to be successful, really in any career, but especially um, as an entrepreneur. So about that time, the internet was exploding. Um, it gave the world the ability to instantly connect, to create, to improve, to educate, to empower. It was changing lives. It, this was 1998. Yeah. So um, when my best friend and former college roommate, Scott Atkinson, who we work together today, uh, approached me about starting an internet company in Gainesville, um, it seemed like the reasonable thing to do. So my life began as an entrepreneur at age 27. Um, after a, what was going to be a career this way, completely went this way. So, but I, I haven't regretted any of it. Um, so here we were, two guys with passion, an idea, a plan, and probably about ten dollars between the two of us. <laughs> so, so fortunately, through past connections, and that's another thing I, I, I want to talk about. Um, get involved in as many and as things as you can as a student and even in the workforce. Uh, I had always been super active when I was here at Gainesville College. I did the intramural sports, was tutor in the library, I was on SGA, um, multiple other committees. Um, I'd volunteered for political campaigns uh, in college, had volunteered and served on boards of many nonprofits and business organizations, you know, young in my career. and. Not only is it fun, you know, getting a diverse exposure to um, your community and the rest of the world, but giving matters. It's always mattered. And as an indirect result, for some people it's their motivation for doing it, but an indirect result is you're going to meet people, you're going to make connections, and in life you're going to need them. Um, you know, whether it's in a traditional nine to five job, but especially. Uh, starting a business. I mean, it is critical to have a strong network of people that um, you know and you trust and that you can fall back on and that you can rely on. So, I say that to say, fortunately, through past connections from um, jobs and volunteering in the community, Scott and I were introduced to um, family in Gainesville of serial entrepreneurs, specifically in the, in the media business, Mr. John and Jay Jacobs, and they own WDUN, um, Magic 102.9. Mr. Jacobs had brought cable to Hall County in the 60s before selling it off to, uh, to Charter, and so they themselves had always been an entrepreneurial company with a passion for connecting the community, et cetera. So, um, my good friend and mentor, Gordon Sawyer, uh, introduced Scott and I to the Jacobs, and we pitched our plan. They saw our business. They took a big chance on us, and AccessNorthGeorgia.com was born. Um, and then we told them we couldn't do any of the work. We didn't have any of the money, so we had to, buy, we had to hire designers and developers, uh, programmers, to, to do the rest of the project. But, uh, but we, built that, we built that program um, over a year. Um, and it, it was a many faceted, and I'll tell you this too, you, you don't have to be an expert in business to write a business plan. Here's just another, uh, another aside. Scott and I, uh, you know, he went to business school. I had a PR degree and had worked in politics, so I didn't know the first thing about, um, you know, writing something that probably made sense business-wise, but because we were marketers, he had a marketing focus and I had a PR focus. We knew how to write something that would convince somebody that our idea was good. So, but, but you know, we, we put together a um, pretty solid business plan, but it was, uh, you know, we didn't refer to business books. We didn't, we didn't go off and, you know, we did a ton of research on, on the product we wanted to create, this web portal, a um, uh, lot of research, but then we just went with our guts and and use common sense to put together, you know, here's what we want to do, here's how we're going to make money, here's how we're going to grow, here's how we're going to expand, and um, it was a fun exercise in itself, but it wasn't some super formal, you know, following a direct path. Now, 
the world's changed probably a little bit, but still I say that to, um, we trusted our guts that it was a good idea. We believed in it. And, you know, we convinced two people with a lot of money to fund the entire thing. And lo and behold, you know, here it's almost 20 years later, it's still um, an entity and it's still in existence. But um, our model for what we wanted to do that with that was a news and information site, but it was also, it was much bigger than that at, at the time. It was, um, we, we saw, we wanted to kind of be the creative loafing of North Georgia. We wanted to target the people in Atlanta and surrounding areas. Here are all the things you can do in North Georgia, and the revenue models were, <coughs> and gosh, some of y'all probably weren't even born when we were doing this, but um, sponsored day trips, you know, obviously banner and tile ads, but back in 98, nobody had a website to even send somebody from their ad back, so we knew, you know, we could pick up and do do the web, um, the websites and the marketing for um, for all the companies in the Gainesville area because you know they'd been in business for 60, 70 years and had hundreds of hundreds of advertisers. So um, so we we set out to build this massive organization and and after about a year um, they truly loved what they were, which was the news organization at at their roots. So it was decided that um, um, we, we felt like we'd have more fun developing websites and doing marketing and solving all kind of problems for tons of different businesses rather than working on you know, one company in general. So um, in October 2000, under the mentoring and tutelage of Mr. Sawyer again, uh, we started Red Clay Interactive. And that's another piece of advice uh, that I will give you, and I'll probably elaborate on it a little bit in the question and answer session with Ruben, but um, mentors are critical to starting a business, even, even having a career. Um, the best thing, I mean, best thing in the world you can do is learn from people that have been there, done that, that are older, older than you. One of, the, probably the, some of the best life lessons that enabled me to be who I am today were one of the things I did it when I was still at Gainesville College was I volunteered when Mr. Sawyer ran for state senate in 92 and his came his campaign advisory board were all World War II retired businessmen I mean they were the greatest generation and just the the fall working under under those guys um, they just taught me so much just about life in general um, about, um, and um, so I can't say enough about fi find mentors you know if you're really interested in in starting a business or, or having a business and you'd be surprised at, um, at how willing most business people are um, to pour themselves into uh, people that are serious about you know, wanting wanting to do something. So, so <clears throat> we worked with Gordon, and we started Red Clay. And the a funny thing kind of happened. I began to see that through how we set our business up, and through our culture, and how we were running our business, and solving problems for all our clients, and implementing those that. Um, we, we were um, enabling to grow their businesses and also, but more importantly, what we were doing by hiring people, giving people jobs, improving their lives, helping them grow, um, and volunteering and being a part of the community. I had kind of blindly stumbled into my late teens dream of changing the world because we were. We were doing it one client at a time, one person at a time, and having much more impact in people's lives on a, in a one-on-one -on -one um, basis and things shifted for me at that point it became it no longer became a job uh, it became a cause and that's something that that I would tell you as well no matter what you want to do find your passion um, and follow it because when you're driven by something that's bigger than yourself uh, or more than money or things like that um, 
you're going to stick with it. And that's, you know, we've, we've been through a lot of tough times over 16 years at Red Clay, but, but um, we, we've stuck with it because we're passionate about what we do and we love what we do. Um, so, like I said, from that point forward, it wasn't just about being the best web development and interactive agency, um, doing the best work, but we had a higher purpose. So, um, one of the things that, that we learned early too was culture and core values always trump balance sheets and profit. Um, relationships were much more important than awards, and that, that's something else I'll tell you. Um, if you know you're looking to start a business or be a part of um, any company or entrepreneurial organization or any job period if the company doesn't have a good culture and they don't respect you as an employee and they don't want to make your life better professionally and personally no matter how much money you're making you may want to consider getting another job because that's a job it's not a career it's not a purpose so that's one of the things that we have stuck to at at the cost of profit at times and it's, it's hurt the business at times but but we've always viewed every client and every individual with uh, with respect and had the intention of helping grow their lives and, and and make them better so as the company continued to grow we saw other ways to make the world a better place um, through red clay we encouraged our employees to get Involved, as I said, volunteering or in nonprofits, speaking at schools. Uh, I don't do the speaking thing, but uh, but mentoring and working um, with students. We we one of the things we did um, for a season is we hired a professional counselor, had that person in the office once a week to wear because we knew a well-rounded person. Um, not only did we care about people and want to make sure that they had opportunities in their personal lives to succeed but we also knew the better the home life is the better an employee is but that was another way we you know we were still focusing on we're building websites and we're doing marketing but we're focusing on people and we're we're, we're changing we're still changing lives and improving lives even even today um, we we have a contract with um, marketplace ministries to where we have a female and a male chaplain that um, are available if people need them they pop in one, you know, once every other week just to say hello. But the, but, but the real work they do is um, there's a death in a family or somebody's in the hospital or somebody's taught somebody. Um, it's they're there and, and people utilize it. And I say all that not to, to make it look like we're some holy great company. That's, I mean, you know, I'm the chief of centers and um, you know, as Paul said and everything else. But it's, it's to emphasize that you matter and people matter. So as you're working through a career, fi find an organization that, if, that believes in you and cares about you. Um, one of the other things we did, or, or we have committed to, we started a, a small self-funded foundation with the hope of one day um, we're going to have the funds to where we can directly impact the community um, and the world through you know, direct monetary giving. So I um, mean, we, we're going to you know, invite um, our employees, our vendors, our clients, etc., to participate in that. But, um, but, but yeah, there's always been a theme of, for us, of uh, making people better, and it's what's, I think it's what's helped us. Like I said, through multiple, not depressions, but recessions, and um, just changing our business model, um, not our model, but our customer base from times is our market. We obviously we're in a market that um, reinvents itself every six months to some degree, but every 18 to 36 months, it's um, it, it it flows and and um, once again, that's one of the things of I, I feel like being a successful entrepreneur is um, you stick to your core, which for us was you know improving the businesses and lives of our clients, providing a good environment for our employees and contributing to the community. That's kind of all we've done for 16 years. Now, how we've done that has changed. You know, it was websites, it's evolved into much more, uh, many more complex things as a marketing agency today. But, but we've stayed true to that passion and those core values. And um, as a result, you know, 
we have been successful and um, but it's not been easy you know there, you, I have the I have the stories of not getting paid for months and my wife being at home with her newborn with no car and you know having to rely on other people to you know that all, all that stuff is a reality honestly in, in, a, in a lot of entrepreneurial and startup stories um, it's real it's not easy um, but if you believe in what you're doing and it's not just a job you'll persevere you'll get through it um, and you'll succeed um, so for me I didn't want to be an entrepreneur I wanted to change the world and through this journey today I am kind of I'm living my dream and I'm, I'm getting paid for it um, and sometimes you know, we pinch ourselves and, and say, you know, we're really getting paid to do this? Because, I mean, we go to work and we have fun. Um, but we work hard, and, but we're true to what we do, and um, it's, it's awesome. It really is. Um, I can't say I've always, you know, stayed the course and followed um, that vision and my goals directly. I've lost direction from time to time, many times, actually, um, over the year. Um, but fortunately, when that happens, because of our culture and who we are as a company, it's bigger than myself or it's bigger than any one individual. Um, my coworkers will come along and smack me in the back of the head and get me back on track. Um, and that's another thing, as I, I would tell you, if you're starting a business or you have a business, is um, always have an open environment to where you can have accountability and you can be honest and you can be transparent and you can share. Um, because it's, one, it's a lonely place if you don't have that, but two, um, you can really get off the rails um, if you're not careful. So we've seen a lot of change over the past 16 years. We've had a lot of uh, wins and losses, but um, we're super, super excited to see, you know, what the future holds. It's funny, I was just, I was making some notes on what's been the biggest change in red clay from 2000. 2016 and um, um, I think this says a lot and this should say a lot to you as far as um, starting a business or being an entrepreneur in 2000 we were three guys in a rented room solving problems for our clients with the tools we had at the time it was strategy and consulting it was creative resources and technology in 2016 we're 20 something people in a, in a building, solving problems with the tools we have. Uh, strategy and consulting, creative and technology. The core of what we do has never changed. But our industry, like I said, has changed rapidly. But we've evolved with it, and that, that's the key to success. Stick to what you know, stick to the core function of what you want to do, but be willing to shift as your market shifts. You know, we. Uh, a few years ago, you know, we decided doing just small one-off web projects was no longer a good fit for us because clients needed ongoing marketing, they needed content marketing, they needed to close the loop from sales to marketing, and, and you couldn't do that in just a single website with a little SEO. So um, it was a tough decision, but Scott convinced me and others that uh, we're going to get out of that business, and it was about 40% of our revenue in our customer base at the time. But we believed it was the right thing to do because we weren't helping people doing just that. So we stopped doing that. And lo and behold, we saw a lot of our revenue base go away. But it, we knew it was the right thing to do because it's where our market, market was going. And it's what, for us to deliver real honest results to our customers, um, it, it would be wrong to do otherwise. So, um, you know, that's the other thing always try to do the right thing but be willing to shift and be flexible so um, so anyway I'm not sure you know Reuben if you want to ask me some questions or um, okay somebody's got to want to know something Yes, sir. How did you all market back in the early 2000s to the How did we market red clay? Well, uh, whenever you first started up in 2000. Great question. We didn't directly. We showed up. We volunteered. 
We served on nonprofit boards. We participated in chamber programs. We relied on contacts and networks. And we did damn good work. And people talked about us. And that, honestly, in, in 16 years, we've never marketed. That's kind of sc scary to say. You know, the cobbler's kids have holes in their shoes, the old slogan. A lot of it's because we're too busy doing it for everybody else. But it goes back to that being involved, be out there, and do good work, and, and do the right thing, even if it costs you money, and you'll get a reputation. But we, we grew, oh my gosh, just exponentially. One, we had a product people needed. Two, and, and I didn't do the actual the, the development, the creative design, so I can say we had amazing people that did the work, and that's another thing we've always, we've been very slow to hire, quick to fire, uh, sometimes not quick to fire, but, uh, but we've always focused on good people, but just by being transparent and being honest, but like I said, you know, at one point I thought I worked for Chamber of Commerce, the United Way, the JCs, multiple other organizations, but you know, that was my role in the company. It was to be involved, you know, and, and for somebody that just loves people, it was like a dream come true, but, but that's what we did, and it just grew over time, and then, you know, we'd have staff go on to different companies, and, you know, they would call us. You'd have people that were with one client that moved on to another company, and then that client, you know, would, they'd come back to us that way, um, but um, really just working hard and doing the right thing, and, and, you know, the grace of God is just we were able to kind of grow things just organically. So, but we do have plans and intentions though in 2017 to really start ramping things up because we're ready to we're ready to own it. Um, so, that I would have to defer. Um, he, he's asking what would we be doing in in 2017 to it to expand our agency. Part of it is going back, we were in Gainesville for 12 years, let me, let me say that, and then as our customer base grew larger and as it was harder and harder to gain some of the skill sets we needed from employees um, to get them to drive up to this area, we made the decision in 2012 to relocate, we're, we're still barely out of Hall County, but we're in, we're in Buford now, we're in the Gainesville area and it's probably 25, 30 minutes closer, and, and um, in doing so, we've expanded our customer base, and we've recruited well, and, we're, and we're, we're doing an amazing thing, but we've kind of been focused on the business for the last four, excuse me, um, hiccups, um, the last four years, but we lost a lot of that connection that I talked about, of the volunteerism and the things that, that we were doing in the community. We've been somewhat active in the Gwinnett Chamber, um, which has helped us um, stay connected. But one of the things um, that we're slated to do is we're going to get super, super active in trade associations and industry groups in the Atlanta area um, to where, once again, we can meet more marketing representatives from corporations and things like that. We're really going to make it a part of everybody's job to get involved in something. Um, but then also um, through what we do for other clients in regards to you know various marketing technologies and platforms, um, we're finally going to take the time to, to put a plan together for for ourselves and, and implement it. And I don't know the details of that because you never know. I mean, honestly, and we've got experts internally that do that. You know, I, I, I'll tell them who I want to reach and uh, how I want to grow. But then all the smart people. Um, We'll figure out how to get us there. So, does that help at all? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yes, sir. How do you uh, stay on the envelope of technology? It is. It's light speed. <laughs> we, as an agency, um, are trying to foster a culture of education and learning. Scott and Tim 
do an amazing job of constantly reading, paying attention to things, going to conferences. We're about to send, uh, these guys are about to head up to Inbound, which is um, one of the largest marketing conferences in, in the country to spend, spend days up there learning about new marketing technologies and, and platforms and things. But a lot of it's research, a lot of it's keeping uh, their ear to the ground, a lot of it's listening to clients' needs and just searching for what's out there and then educating ourselves. So, because, and, and, and it's not, <coughs> excuse me, always being an early adopter. You know, we don't jump on just the newest thing. We only do things that get results. That's one of the things that we've been um, focused on as a company. If it's not going to work for a client, whether it's a project, whether it's a technology, whether it's whatever, we won't do it. We, we won't take, we've turned away so much work when people had ideas and a lot of money because we knew they wouldn't work. Um, so, so we don't, you know, oftentimes you will have clients, man, what, 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 we need to get on this, you know, back in the day, it was, we need to get on this Facebook thing. And I'm like, no, you build industrial fans that go in, you know, businesses in Eastern Europe. You don't need to do this Facebook thing, you know, just, just for the sake of it. So it just all depends. It's a, but it, it, it is, it's a lot of reading, it's staying, in, it's joining associations um, and just staying on top of, of trends and, and, and when, when they're right, implementing those and, and, and just being you know, open and honest. Sometimes you know, they don't work. That's part of what our industry is. It's, it's you do things, you analyze, you iterate, you do you know, and measure again and analyze. And so, so it's just a, it's not an easy thing to do, and it's why, you know, working with an agency, that's why a lot of our clients, they have in-house marketing people that are brilliant, but they have one or two people, not 20-something people, so we can specialize in different areas, and that's why they see us kind of as an extension of their marketing departments. Um, so there's does that answer. Okay. So while many of us are in college now, I think a lot of us are also looking forward to the future with higher education and getting a master's, for example. And I was just wondering, in your professional opinion, I've heard both sides about a master's is not necessary in marketing, and it is necessary in marketing. And can you tell a difference between the employers or your employees that do have a master's, and then do you believe that it's necessary for a marketer to get higher up in the future? Well, I'm speaking at an institution that, that offers graduate degrees, so yeah. uh, I would definitely not... Um, say don't, you know, don't get a master's, but I would say at Red Clay, experience and attitude um, trumps, experience, attitude, passion, heart, and education um, trump what we look at degree. We've got some people on staff that are senior employees that graduated high school. They don't, they don't even have a college degree, but they're brilliant, and they're so passionate about what they do. Um, they're amazing. But I obviously earned probably 14 graduate degrees just over the last 16 years in trying to run run a business, et cetera. But I, I, I do think when in, in specialized skills, you know, it's important to have formal training. But but I would also say the best thing you can do is do internships. Because for me personally, even though you know I was a PR major, where I really learned how to write and to market and communicate was I interned at an ad agency. I interned in the corporate affairs department of a Fortune 50 company. Um, I worked in political campaigns, and and I really learned the nuts and bolts skills of success in those internships. However the core foundation of being able to write, being able to, to do the things that I've done professionally, I did learn in college. So I go either way, you know, um, but you're right. You know, some employers say, okay, I'm just gonna, I'll have to pay more money for that person versus this person. And they, you know, they, they have a negative attitude towards academia. I don't, um, you know, I, I, I have a neutral, you know, opinion on that. We have one young man that, um, he interned with us last year, and he was going to go to um, one of the creative graduate schools in Atlanta. He was a copywriter, and um, the kid's brilliant. He's already writing better than 
our creative director is a 20 something year veteran of the ad industry and, and he said that um, you know this kid's writing better than some of the best copywriters he worked with in, in his very successful career so you know in his case we said you, you don't you don't need to waste your time because you're already better than anything you'll learn there and you're getting paid to do it instead of paying you know sixty thousand for for that advanced degree but in other other things um, it's important to learn those direct skills um, Thank you, uh, Lance, for that great, great talk. Okay. And thank each and every one of you for being here. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. We're not completely through. Uh, but let's give Lance a big hand. <laughs>